the MOT testing service, or as Matt Berry would say, the MOT testing. No, I'm not as good as Matt Berry. He has an incredible voice. I'm going to show you a little bit about the MOT and why we do it and how it's done and all the rest of it. So, some lucky person. Not only has a 007 number plate, but also an MOT number plate. So I thought, what a perfect, um, what a perfect opportunity to talk about the MOT, do the MOT, display the MOT. That lucky person is me. Oh my God, I love this car. Can we just spend a moment to appreciate that even stood still, birds cheeping in the background. Angle grinders firing up over the road. <laughs> this car. Oh. It, it just doesn't fail to put a smile on my face. So I, I put the information in, the registration number, the last six of the chassis number into the computer. The computer then finds it if it's in there, which this one is. Sometimes they're not. There's, uh, I don't need to explain all this to you. You don't really need to know all of this. You select it print off the inspection sheet, your MOT begins. I won't do that now because when I do an MOT, I'm not supposed to be interrupted. So if I'm stopping and talking to the camera and filming parts of the MOT procedure, then I'm interrupting myself. So I won't actually start this and log on now, but I will go through all the elements of the MOT. Well, I'll go through most of the elements of the MOT. Um, the ones that are important, well, they're all important, but yeah, just to give you people at home that might not know anything about cars or MOTs, I'll give you an idea of what happens, what we're looking for, uh, pass failure criteria, things like that. So um, yeah, let's crack on. Did you know that you can have your MOT done a calendar month before it expires and then should it pass you then effectively have 13 months MOT it's like buy one get one free but not I should also probably warn you that although you can have it done a month early and have 13 months if it passes if it fails the failure will now supersede the pass you have so you could be breaking the law uh, it is viewed as a bit of a grey area in some circles but let's face it Insurance companies, traffic cops, and general pencil-pushing bureaucrats don't believe in grey areas. And before I can even log on to do the MOT, I have to check a few things. One is that doors, boot, bonnet, all open and closed. This, we have to do this before we can do the MOT. Then we have to check number plates that they match front and rear. We have to find the last six of the chassis number so we can put that in the computer, it all matches up. So that's that, that's, the, uh, that's one of the boring bits, but necessary. Then here we have the emissions machine, which makes sure that our boogie men cars are not killing the planet any more than all of the other mad <coughs> that's going on in the world. Now, one of the elements of the test, although it doesn't come into effect very often at all, because you don't see these very often, well, I don't, um, noise, nuisance. Okay, now some people will view exhaust noise as a nuisance, so I've bought one of these. That's fine, I've got no problem with that. Yeah, that's killing the planet. This is definitely within the noise limit. In fact, I, I will prove it. I will prove it. within legal limits, okay? So, um, you know, come at me. And there you have it. The modern boogeyman is really very, very not boogeyman-y at all. Okay, so come with me now to the next part of the test where I pull it onto the inspection lift. Uh, I'm not gonna go through every single element of this because it will be a 40 minute video. No one wants to sit and watch that. So, things we're looking for now warning lights on the dash that shouldn't be there. I look after this thing impeccably, so there is this, you know, it, I almost not bother MOTing it. It's definitely not gonna fail, and it's not gonna have anything wrong with it at all, because this is one of my children. One of my preferred children, no, I'm joking. I love all my children equally, especially the German one. 
we have to check things like lights. So I've got those mirrors up there because this is a woman. I've got that one back up there as well. So I check the side lights are working. Check the dipped beam, check the main beam, indicators, horn. This is a very unmanly horn in this car. Um, I've been in positions where I'd probably rather crash it than beat the horn to warn people because it's it's not a manly horn. Hazards work. Now you have to check the hazards with the ignition on and the ignition off. And uh, the reason for that obviously is the hazards. If you've broken down somewhere, if your car's conked out, the hazards need to work without the engine on and without the ignition on. We do a seat belt check, make sure the seat belts work as intended. So make sure the seat moves backwards and forward. Um, a lot of cars have near your headlight switch to be a little adjuster with numbers on it. Makes your headlights go up and down. We have to check that works if it's fitted. This is a headlight beam tester. We are looking for an image. Hold on, there we go. For the image to fit within certain lines, meet certain criteria. Obviously this does because again, it's legendary. I'm legendary. This car wants for nothing other than a good wash. Now some testers will have a different way of running through the order of things. It's fine, it doesn't matter. As long as everything gets done, that's fine. I do it in what I believe is the most efficient way for me. So I go to half height next, check the tires. So we're looking for the tire sizes, okay? All the tire sizes, well, on the same axle. So front axle, they've got to be the same size. Rear axle, they've got to be the same size. Now the thing with the car like this, rear tires are bigger. So the rear one's there, bigger number. Front ones, smaller number. The other thing we're looking for is a dot code. It's there, 3322. That represents the 33rd week of the year 2022. So we have to log that down. We, we make a note of that on our little clipboard there. The other thing I do while I'm here, because I'm here, we can have a quick look, make sure the suspension looks like it's sat right, not broken. We can have a quick look at the brake pads in there. There you go, look at that, plenty of meat on there, which is good because they're expensive as well. Look, condition of the discs, quick check of the tires while it's there. Then we go on, we do the other three. Next stage for me in my testing, because I got a one man test lane, is I've got the vehicle up, got it on the stops. Shaker plates, okay, now this simulates rocking of the steering back and forward. Shaky, shaky, and then what you do then, or what I do then, so we've got one, got, got the track rod ends are up there. Testing, I got my hands on there and I'm feeling I'm feeling for any movement, any knocking or anything in there. Then we switch it and then we've got this which stresses it in and out transversely. And then we are checking the ball joints. There's lots of innuendos to be had in this trade. I love it. Because I'm a child. So yeah, we'll check the ball joints at that point. Obviously, there's no issues with this, but I'm looking for issues with cars. Well, I'm not looking for issues. I mean, I am, because if there are issues, then I have to either advise the person that there is a, an issue that is gonna need looking at, or I have to say, bad person. If it's excessive, if it's outside the passable criteria, which I am the law, I'm the judge, jury, and executioner on an MOT, unless the DVSA come in and beat me and tell me I've done it wrong. But I do pride myself on doing a good, concise job I'm not over the top. I'm not too harsh and I'm not too unharsh. Fair, that's the word, isn't it? Then I grab my lamp once that's done. Now, on this car, you can't really see anything because for aerodynamic purposes, it's completely covered apart from a couple of little access spots. But then you get to the suspension, so you can check suspension now. This is an anti-roll bar across here, connects to the subframe and then connects to the suspension. Got little links there, ball joints in each end. It's there. God, I thought there was movement there. That, no, there's not. No, that's good. That's good, because I haven't heard it while driving. Well, you don't hear anything over that legal exhaust. So yeah, so you're looking for movement, anything that shouldn't be there you're looking for. And obviously you're looking to make sure that the things that should be there are there. Checking brake pipes, brake hoses. It's, it's just, it's a check. To so check things, it's not really worth me telling you about if you're not into cars and you don't know about cars. Just rest assured that all of this is for your safety. Everything except for the, oh, I shouldn't really say the emissions aren't for your safety because then I'm not towing the company line, am I? But there are certain things in the MOT, which you very, very, in my opinion, very definitely have to have, literally can't live without in some circumstances. And there are some things that have been done to make bureaucrats Happy? Are bureaucrats happy? I suppose you put a pile of paperwork in front of them, they are. 
anyway, that's going to open another can of worms, so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. I would jack up the front and the rear end of the car. It would enable me to check for any play in the wheel bearings, rotate the wheel to check the entirety of the tyres, make sure there's no nails in there, check things like CV boot gaiters, which are rubber boots that hold grease in and protect the joint, steering rack boots, which again prevent road dirt and water from getting into components where they don't belong. So again, safety, longevity of the vehicle. Safety, safety, safety. The MOT is about safety. That's number one thing really is safety. And the last thing I tested on an MOT are the brakes. They do advise it's the last thing because if you spot anything dangerous on the brakes during your MOT inspection, then you don't do the brake test because it could cause damage or harm. It then spins up the old whirly gigs there, for want of a better word. Then we apply the brake pedal, we bring it up and we hold it. We check for any fluctuation, imbalance. That's beautiful, I like it. Then we let it off and we apply the brakes fully and in this case they've locked. Then we do the rears and then we do the handbrake parking brake because some parking brakes are operated with your foot therefore it's not a handbrake it would be a foot brake but it's not a foot brake because the middle pedal is your foot brake unless it's an automatic in which case the left pedal is the foot brake unless it's got a foot brake operated parking brake in which case the middle pedal is the foot brake and the pedal on the left is the parking brake so we call it the parking brake <laughs> Now my brakes passed the rolling road inspection and I knew they would because when I'm doing the legal speed limit and I slam those babies on, they stop me quickly. And I'd like to think that if I ever ventured above the legal speed limit, they do as good a job of stopping me. But we don't go over the legal speed limit because that would be bad. I was gonna say, and then if you're lucky, I guess there is luck in life, but really what you want to be doing is making sure that your car isn't a piece of shit and that you've actually respected it, respected yourself, respected other road users, and you've maintained your vehicle to the point where you get one of these. Now yours might have writing over it because you might have a tire that's nearly illegal, or you might have brakes that are nearly illegal, or you might have a windscreen that's got chips in it. Or, and I don't mean like chip shop chips, you know what I mean. Come on, come on. We're all adults here. Those advisories will be on there. I wonder if I've got an example I can show you. Oh, yes. Well, here's one that failed. Look at that. Look at all those failures. But when the repairs are done next week, these ones here will be gone. And unless they get these done during the repairs, these will be left. Not bad enough to fail, definitely bad enough to make sure that they're written down on there so the person knows there are issues that are gonna need doing, usually before the next MOT. Doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice? Sorry, I'm not gloating, it's just, you know, I'm 40 now and um, I work bloody hard. So I like to treat myself when I can. And I am a car person and if I'm not mistaken, that is very much a car. It's so much more than a car. It's a lover and a friend. I mean, oh my God, I've said too much. No, anyway, come on, go and have a lovely weekend, all right? Ooh, and don't forget to give Stu and Mutika a shout when you need your MOT, which if you didn't know, stands for Ministry of Transport. I know, it doesn't make sense when you say, oh, I'm gonna get an MOT on my car. I'm gonna get a Ministry of Transport on my car. I think they just haven't modernised it. It's from when it used to be the... No one needs to know, it's boring as hell. Go and have fun.